Welcome to the Oshwal experience. The following video is a short history of Oshwals. About 2500 years ago, the Kshatriya warring tribes in India converted to Jainism in the town of Oshya, now called Ossian, in the Jodhpur district of Rajasthan. Jains believe in the sanctity of all life, human as well as other living creatures. This principle is known as Ahimsa, the, filling, the philosophy of non-violence. Upon conversion, the Kshatriyas called themselves Oshwals after the town of Oshia, having abandoned their occupation as warriors and due to religious and political persecution and difficult economic conditions, a large number of Oshwals migrated to Sindh, which is now in Pakistan, while others moved to Punjab and Kutch. Oshwals ventured into various occupations such as farming, trading and as laborers. The conditions in Sindh became hostile for the Oshwals and once again they migrated from Sindh to Kutch in the 16th and 17th centuries. Due to conflicts and internal feuds between the two ruling families in Kutch, Jam Raval, the head of one of the families, left Kutch with an army of 100,000 and some 80,000 other people to go to Kathiawar. Among these were approximately 5,000 Oshwals. Jam Raval conquered several small kingdoms in Kathiawar and formed a vast kingdom which he named Halar and chose the village of Kambaria as the capital. Once Kambaria became prosperous, he moved the capital to Jamnagar. The Oshwals finally settled in Halar. Oshwals separated into two groups, farmers and businessmen. The farmers settled down in 52 villages in and around Jamnagar, the Bhavan Gam. Jam Raval provided land for settlement of the Oshwals. Most of the Oshwals were landowners and farmed their own land. The businessmen moved to the towns and cities and started businesses. The village people lived simple lives, dressed in simple clothes and called themselves Halari Oshwals, while the city dwellers lived and dressed more fashionably and called themselves Gurjar Oshwals. The royal family gave the Halari Oshwals the title Mahajans, meaning great people because of their honesty and patriotism. It was a peaceful life in Halar, but as time passed, natural disasters like floods and famine took a toll on the people. From the middle of the 19th century, young people therefore moved from the villages to Jamnagar, where they became small traders and produce brokers. Later on, many started small-scale cottage industries such as, such as button factories and manufacturing brass parts. Towards the end of the 19th century, young Oshwals began migrating to find work in big towns and cities in India, mainly Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Madhya Pradesh. Today, large numbers of Oshwals are involved in very successful export, import, manufacturing and other businesses in India and very many have been educated and are very successful professionals in their own right. At the end of the 19th century, Set Karanathumalde and his formidable wife Panchi Sethani held a meeting of all the elders of Oshwals of the 52 villages and discussed the deteriorating situation of the community as a whole and the prospects of settling in Africa. Karaset was a man of great foresight and being very concerned with the poverty being experienced by the Oshwals in Halar felt that migration to East Africa would possibly be the answer to the quest for a better life. Most of the people did not have enough money to travel by steamers to Africa and therefore they had to travel by dows. The journey was often hazardous as the seas were rough and it would take months to de reach their destination. 
The first Halari Oshwal who undertook the journey was 18-year-old Jetha Anand from the village of Karaberaja. He settled in Madagascar. Then, in 1899, four Oshwals, Hijikara, the son of Set Karanathu from Moti Rafudal, Popat Vershi from Amla, Devji Hiji and Nathu Devji from Dunia, went by Dao from Porbanda to Mombasa in Kenya. A year later, Hijikara's wife Kankuben and the first Oshwal woman who went to Kenya joined him with his brother Devjikara. In 1901, the brothers established the first Oshwal business in Mombasa by the name of Shah Hijikara and Co. Popat Vershi, Devji Hiji and Nathu Devji went to Nairobi where Devji Hiji started the first Oshwal business in Nairobi. He opened a provision shop. He was also actively involved in the community and was the first president of the Oshwal Association of Nairobi in 1916. These pioneers helped other Oshwals who migrated from India. Oshwals settled in various towns in Kenya and Tanzania and have community institutions and centers in all of these towns. Following the development and progress of Oshwals, especially in business, education was now seen as a priority. In 1941, Devji Kara called a meeting of representatives of the various Oshwals who were scattered all over Kenya, and the Oshwal Education and Relief Board was established. Today, the Oshwal institutions, including community centers, schools, and hospitals have surpassed all expectations and enriched the lives of all Oshwals and the local communities in East Africa. Oshwals have become very important to the economy of East Africa, especially in Kenya, as a result of their highly successful businesses and the very successful professionals. Due to the lack of higher education facilities and opportunities in East Africa, several students came to the UK in the 1930s, but they all returned after completing their studies. In addition, the well-known philanthropist and businessman Meiji Petra Shah, also known as MP Shah, visited the UK on business in 1938. He set up a company in the UK in 1947 but this was wound up within a couple of years. One of the first Oshwals to be settled in the UK was Kishorilal Barmal Nagra, also known as Kishorilal Barmal Virani, who arrived in 1950. He was soon followed by MP Shah in 1957, who set up a new business, Premchen Raichen London Limited, around 1959. Others followed suit, and then in the early 1960s, following independence of the East African countries and changes to the requirements of operating small and medium-sized businesses, some Oshwals went back to India and some to the USA and Canada. However, as most of these leaving were British subjects, they opted to settle in the UK. A further exodus of Asians, including Oshwals, who took place in 1969 as a result of changes to British immigration law. Nineteen fifty seven, Uganda, nineteen fifty nine, nineteen fifty eight, Mamma, and Nana, when I joined Kadu. 
મારા જેઠ ને બધા ભાગીદાર હતા યુગાંડા ફૂડ પ્રોડક્ટ્સમાં અહીંયા દુકાન લઈ લીધી પણ કોને અહીંયા દુકાન ચલાવવા માટે મોકલવા બેલજીભાઈ અમે દેખાણા તો હરખુભાઈ ને અમુક કર્યા એમણે અહીંયા દુકાન ઓવરસીસ ગ્રોસ સ્ટાર્ટ કરી ગ્રોસરીની દુકાન પછી ધીરુભાઈએ તમને જોઈન કર્યું મારા દીય ધીરુભાઈ એ રીતે અમે અહીંયા ઘર સેટલ થયા ને પછી તો ફેમિલી ચાલતું જ હતું ગ્રો થયું ને ઓસવાલ હરખુભાઈ ને બહુ જ હતું કે આપણી જ્ઞાતિ કરવી જોઈએ બધાને સપોર્ટમાં અત્યારે આપણા લોકો બહુ ઓછા અમે આવ્યા ત્યારે ચાર જ ઘર હતા અમારું પછી ખીમચંદ એમનું રોકાને અમે એટલે લઈ આપ્યું હતું એમ પીશા અને ધીરુભાઈ કચરા ટેમચંદ રજ પણ ચાર ઘર પછી રમેશભાઈને બધા આવ્યા એમ જોઈ એટલામાં જ અમે એકબીજાના ઘરે જાય ને અમારી કોમ્યુનિટી મનુભાઈ એમ પીશાના પત્રી જાઓ અહીંયા ફરવા આવ્યા એને કહ્યું કે તમે કરો આ પ્રમાણે તો એના એના ગાય એન્કરેજથી એમને કિશોરભાઈ વીરાણીને હરખુભાઈ નક્કી કર્યું કે આપણે કરીએ ભેગા થઈ બધા જેટલા હતા એટલા એમાં સ્ટાર્ટ થઈને પછીથી બધાએ ભાગ લીધો અને પૂરેપૂરી જ્ઞાતિ આગળ વધવા માંડીને સરસ અત્યારે આપણે ધ ઓશવાલ એસોસિએશન ઓફ ધી યુ કે ઓ એ યુ કે એઝ ઇટ ઇઝ નોન ટુ ડે વોઝ ફોર્મ્ડ બાય અ ફ્યુ ઇન્સ્પિરેશનલ કમ્યુનિટી લીડર્સ વેન ઇટ વોઝ રજિસ્ટર્ડ એઝ અ યુ કે ચારિટી ઇન નાઇન્ટીન સેવન્ટી ટુ ઇન ફેક્ટ અ વર્કિંગ કમિટી બિગેન વર્ક ઇન નાઇન્ટીન I've been here about 52 years and the idea of Oswal, the Oswal Association came along when people like Kishore Bhai and Kedi Shah and all said, you know, we, we should do an association similar to what was in Nairobi and we just got uh, carried away and took part and that's how it started. and initially i think first 6 uh, months or so we were busy looking at how to form an association how to uh, what constitution uh, we should have and i think uh, the easiest answer was to bring the constitution over from nairobi copy it change the names from nairobi to arusha and then <laughs> nairobi to london and then look at the implication of each line and then we discovered there were several issues that needed to be sorted out and i think it took good 3 4 years after that when the association was formally registered and accepted by the charity commission as we started looking at the formation of the association and i think the pre- the main focus was how we all come together and uh, we were all sort of known to each other from nairobi or from arusha or mombasa but primarily Naresh of Devshibai from Kirasra or Pankaj of uh, uh, Rafudar or somebody from Dabasang and that, that's how the identity was given and uh, I think that helped because when we wrote back, uh, there were no phone calls at the time, when we wrote back home saying that oh I met uh, Manu or Pankaj or somebody, uh, his dad is from there so my father felt comfort- comforted that yes my son is moving in the right circles and knows the right people uh, thereafter i think uh, the main uh, issue was really to get the constitution formed and give a solid foundation to the future i don't think anybody anticipated that we would have the numbers that we have now and i think people like kishore bhai and keshu bhai and harak singh bhai they, they would be really proud to see what the Oshwal has achieved over the years and I, 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 I personally feel very, uh, how shall I say, joyful and, and happy that we've come so far. Kishore Lal Barmal Virani was elected as the first president of our community in the UK. Since then, there have been 14 different presidents of OA UK. My name is Rakshit Harakshan Lakhamshi Hariya Shah. I'm known to most of you as Rex. I'm the current serving president of Oshawa Association of the UK. The history of our community, there are probably many versions of it, and you know, it's difficult to really identify where it all began, but it certainly began with a very loose association where 
the small few families of Oshawa that were here in the UK used to get together to celebrate the main events. It wasn't until 1967-68 that we actually formally organized a loose association under the name of Oshawa. And it wasn't until 72 that we actually became uh, a proper charitable organization. But what is very important is to realize the true vision and dedication of the early pioneers who established our community. I think no event can go without actually remembering these people because it was their strength, their courage that established the association. Buying this site, 80 acres in Potter's Bar, when people were saying you bought property in the jungle. And today, I don't think I go to any event where I don't hear, my goodness, Oshawa Association, what a wonderful site, what a wonderful hall, what wonderful grounds you have. We owe a great duty of gratitude to the past presidents. I will not name one or two, because I think they all have contributed immensely to the success of our community. And this is something that we should never forget. Whatever we do, it can only be done because we had the strength and the foundation to start the journey that we have embarked upon. The OAUK is set up into nine regional areas. East London, North London, North East London, North West London, South London, West London, Leicester, Luton and Northampton. Since the 1960s, the population of Oshwals in the UK has increased to some 26,000 today. In 1979, the Oshwals Centre, an 80-acre site at Potter's Bar, was purchased. This was followed by the construction of the assembly halls in 1985 on this site. In 1982, the South London Mahajanwari, a property which was previously a church, was purchased. Further centres were purchased more recently, namely the Oshwal Ekta Centre in Northwest London in 2012 and the Oshwal Shakti Centre in West London in 2013. A Gur Derasar, a shrine, was installed at the Oshwal Centre in Potters Bar in 1987 and at the South London Mahajanwari in 1991. In 2004, the foundation stone for the first Shikhar Banderasar, a Jain temple in Europe, was laid under the supervision of Pujya Chitraban. In 2005, the opening ceremony, the Pratishta Mahotsav, took place of this magnificent temple. And today, we celebrate the 10th anniversary. Many dignitaries, including His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, have visited this beautiful temple. The Oshawa community in the UK has grown from strength to strength. Each year 
it celebrates Jain religious festivals, including Pariushar, Ayambal, and Diwali. There is also a focus on the welfare and health issues affecting our members, especially addressing the changing demographics and the provisioning for the future. Daytime activities are held for our elderly and health issues are tackled through talks and health fairs. Uh, Bimpul, uh, Bimpul Ketchi Natubaisha, uh, live in uh, Kenton Harrow, uh, originally from Thika, Kenya, and in India, Nawaga. I was the first Washwal boy at Cambridge. I went up uh, in 1971. It was a great privilege to uh, be able to attend uh, one of the greatest uh, universities in the world. Uh, there have been almost 200. Uh, Oshwas who attended Oxford and Cambridge. The other thing I wanted to say uh, was that I was, whilst at Cambridge, although I was only about 19 years old, I joined the executive committee of one of the early uh, committees of, of OA UK. And we were, those were pioneering days. We started Oshwal News then back in 1972. And uh, we also uh, framed the initial constitution, which is still uh, uh, valid uh, today, most of it. Um. Education is central to all Oshwas. Today, we have a community with a very high number of very successful professionals and businesses. The focus on education begins with the community providing classes for the young children to learn our mother tongue Gujarati, to classes teaching our elderly how to use mobile phones and computers. This has now been enhanced by the creation of the Oshwal Business and Professional Network, OBPN. OBPN provides mentoring work experience, a business helpline for those wishing to start a business or need advice about business, a jobs bank, a business and professionals directory, personal development, including public speaking, CV writing, interview techniques, and networking opportunities. Regular activities are undertaken for the youth, culminating in the annual sports event. The community also has an enabling network which focuses on raising awareness about disability in the community and it organizes various events. Similarly, there is also a women's network which focuses on women's issues and organizes various functions. My name is Bina Naransha. I was born in Kenya and came over to UK in 1973. I qualified as a chartered accountant and started my practice in 1991. I was the first Oshwal woman to actually set up a practice. Um, regarding the women in our community, Oshwal is a very progressive community. As you can see from the number of ladies on the executive committee, also, we have a lot of female successful um, Oshwals on the boards now. The aim of the Women's Welfare Network is to enhance their capability in their professional and social environment in our community. Oshwals have excelled not only in education and business, but are a community with philanthropy at heart going back to the days in Halar when times were very difficult. For a small community, we are privileged to have numerous individuals who have been bestowed an OBE or MBE. In fact, the first MBE was received by Devshi Mepa Shah in 1960 in Thika, Kenya. The 
Good morning, I'm Milan Shah, I'm an Oshwal, I'm a Jain. Um, I was born in London, I'm brought up in Wellingborough in Northamptonshire, so I joined into two Oshwal communities, the Northamptonshire branch as well as the London branch. Oh, um, the MBE, I mean that was quite humbling. An MBE is uh, not really an achievement in itself, it's more a recognition. And in my case, it was really a recognition of the many talented teams I'd worked with over the years in the voluntary sector, in the third sector, in higher education. Um, these teams are all volunteers and I just happen to be the chairman and as always happens, it's the chairman that tends to get the recognition. Um, but let's look at it this way. At the end of the day, so much in society relies on the contributions of volunteers, um, doing what they believe in, uh, focusing on the causes they believe in, the values they believe in. Even the Oshwal community itself and the Oshwal Association is really just a, a, an amalgam of volunteers. So I really hope that in some small way, this little recognition that I've got through an MBE is an inspiration to future generations that they take that tradition of volunteering forward within our community. The Oshwal Association of the UK is an inclusive community. Family values and hard work are still with us today. These are the very reasons for the success of Oshwals and the community as a whole. As you venture into the exhibition in the Oshwal House today, you will see many family trees. At the same time, you have an ideal opportunity to participate in helping us shape the vision of our community and the future of our community. Please do so by posting your suggestions on the vision backdrop in the exhibition. We hope you enjoyed this brief history of Oshwals and enjoy the rest of the exhibition. Jay Jinendra.